Hello and welcome to another adventure here on my channel. Today we're going to be talking about REM Beauty and my, um, my experience with it. And I want to start this video off by saying I was so excited for this line. I was so hyped for this line. I am a huge Ariana Grande fan. I'm wearing my Positions t-shirt today. I keep my REM perfume box in the background of my videos. I love Ariana Grande, but even if I didn't love Ariana Grande, I would have been so, so excited for this makeup because I love the aesthetic of retro futurism, which is like what people from the past, the 50s and 60s, thought about what the future would look like. So old sci-fi aesthetic. And that is what this was inspired by. From the first pictures I saw, I thought this would be so for me. I thought this could be one of my new favorite brands. The neutral with a pop aesthetic really appeals to me. Like everything about this A to Z was made for me to love it. But as you can see from the title of this video, I very much do not. I was shocked with how bad a lot of these products were. To the point where I even got in contact with the brand to try to return them and get a refund. And I try not to return makeup because I don't like the waste of it. I would rather try to find it a new home, but genuinely these products are so bad, I can't give them to someone. I can't in good faith give these products to someone and be like, yeah, here you go, you'll like this because no, they're just, they're just seriously bad. And like most of them just deserve the trash. There are a couple that are okay, that are fine that have their pluses and minuses, but as long as you know what you're getting into, sure. But some of them genuinely are some of the worst makeup products I've ever tried. I don't know if they are the absolute worst, but they are up there. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna review the products one by one and show you some swatches of similar alternative products that perform way better and for the most part are either the same price or cheaper. And then I'm gonna do a demo for you where I do this, this eye look and try out one of the lip products so you can see how bad it looks when it goes on. And then I'm gonna have my best friend come on because I got her to try these products as well so you can get a second opinion on them because this is not a first impressions. It's not like I just put them on and I'm giving you my review. I've worn these products multiple times, multiple ways, really tried to get them to work and for the most part, they just don't. So with that, Let's go ahead and get into the review portion. I'm gonna review them in descending order from the one I think is the best to the one I think is the worst. So the first two are what I think if you just want a piece of REM beauty because you're a huge Ariana Grande fan, then one of these first two is what I personally would recommend. Just know what you're getting into. So the absolute best product I tried is actually the bullet lipstick. I think the packaging on this is so cute. The packaging on the entire line is genuinely phenomenal. Like I know every single review has said this, but the packaging does not photograph well. It doesn't video well. It doesn't record well. Like when it's in your hands, it looks so cute. It feels so luxurious. All the time and attention and care and money clearly went into the packaging. And that is no different for this lipstick. It's super cute. It has this little like window, like it's a little astronaut. I like it. When it goes on, it feels very nice. It's very pigmented. It feels like you're putting a lip balm made of velvet onto your lips. So it's a very nice experience to put this on. The issue with this lipstick is the wear time. This lipstick just kind of evaporates from my lips and I don't understand it because it's not like it wears until I eat or something, which is what I would expect from a bullet lipstick. Like I expect to have to reapply a bullet lipstick at some point, usually after I eat. But in like three hours, having only just sipped a glass of water a couple of times, it looks like I hadn't even put any lipstick on. Like this lipstick was just gone from my lips. I have no idea what happened. It was not under a mask. It wasn't pressed against anything. I was just wearing it casually around my house doing a wear test a few times and it just goes away. I don't know what happens. If you buy this, just know you are going to have to reapply this several times throughout the day. Um, but it looks really good going on. It legitimately is so smooth on the lips. It makes your lips look filtered. So I think if you are like taking pictures a lot, if you are a beauty influencer, this is probably a fantastic lipstick for you because it's going to make your lips look really nice. It's what I'm wearing now. But if you actually are a normal consumer, which I assume the majority of the world is, just know you will have to reapply this several times throughout the day, not just when you eat. You will have to babysit this lipstick. So it's okay. It's decent. If you're going to buy something, this was my favorite, but 
it wasn't great. It was just, okay, I have other lipsticks that do better, that are cheaper or the same price. The second thing is the other thing that I would recommend, again, if you just want like a piece or two of this because you're a huge Ariana Grande fan, and that is the liquid eyeshadow. I have the shade Fembot. Did I even say the shade of the lipstick? I have the lipstick in the shade Bubbly, by the way. That's the shade I have. And I have the shade Fembot of the liquid eyeshadow, and it is the shimmery one, not the matte one, obviously. This is fine. This is a fine liquid eyeshadow. It looks nice. It's pretty. Let me do a little hand swatch for you. That's what it looks like straight from the doe foot. Let me just blend that out a little bit. It's kind of sheer, clearly meant to be a topper. It has a little bit of a shift to it, but not a ton. It's nice. There's nothing wrong with this. I just don't think this is particularly special. And I just personally feel like if I am going to reach for, put in the extra effort to reach for a liquid shadow instead of a powder shadow, I want it to be worth it. I want it to be worth the extra effort it takes to use a liquid instead of a powder. And I just don't feel like this is. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. It looks nice. It looks fine. It wears nice. I will say that about this. It does wear nice. It's just not the best. And there are better liquid eyeshadows for cheaper out there. But the packaging is nice. There's nothing really wrong with it. It's just not very exciting. It's kind of mediocre. Like the best products in this line, packaging is excellent, but the quality is just kind of mediocre. And that's the best in this line. The third product, I got two of the highlighters. And the third product is one of them. And that is the shade Miss Venus. This is the yellowy shade one. I was expecting this to be more like a yellow gold highlighter. What I was expecting was more for it to be like this shade from the Roxy Revolution contour palette. Pretty much a neutral highlighter just with a strong bit of yellow to it. That's what I was expecting this to be and it is not. It is definitely meant to be more of a statement colorful highlighter because that's what I did. I bought one that I thought was going to be a statement highlighter and one that I thought was going to be more neutral. This, again, is very meh. The fact is, this is just not that shiny, not that highlighty. It kind of has this duochrome type shift to it where it has like a clear base and then the yellow, you can see it when you turn your face to the light. But the thing is, I have a highlighter exactly like this with that yellow shift to it. And it's the Kaleidos one in Solar Sailor. And this is just so much better, like worlds better than the REM one that I'm like, why would anyone buy this when they could get this? And it's about the same price, I think. This is what this one looks like in the pan. It is way shinier. That shift is way stronger. It's just like, yeah, this is what this should look like. And it just, it just doesn't. I feel like you can see the difference there a little bit better. This one just has a lot more shine to it, a lot more of that duochrome flip, and this just looks... It's just kind of meh. It's just kind of meh, and you really have to build it up to get a shine, which just makes it look powdery. So if you want this highlighter, seriously, just get this one. It is better in every single way. So those were the first three. Like I said, mediocre at best. I can recommend the first two if you, like I said, just want a piece of REM. The third one, yeah, just get the Kaleidos one. But the bottom three are terrible. They are horrible products that don't work well and don't look good. So basically all three at the bottom are on the same level of just suck, but I have to talk about them in some order. So here we go. Uh, next is the lip stain from the collection. And in all the videos I watched of people getting PR, not a single person got this. And I can see why, because it is garbage. It is garbage. It goes on patchy, sheer. It's not buildable. If you try to build it, it just gets more patchy. If you have the slightest bit of dryness on your lips, it will absolutely cling to it. It feels so, 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 so drying and it wears horribly. It's a lip stain. Like the point of a lip stain is it's supposed to look good over time. You know, it's supposed to look good even as it wears off. But 20 minutes after I put it on, I took a picture and this is what it looks like. This is what this looked like after 20 minutes of wearing it. That looks awful. That is terrible. It's just not good. Like I don't have to be an expert in lip stains or wear them regularly to know that this is not how they're supposed to be. 
and this is a more expensive one. This is a high-end brand one. It's not the most expensive, but for the money you're paying, literally any money is too much to be paying for this because it makes your lips look bad. It makes you look like you're sick. Like it makes you look like something is wrong with your lips. And I don't know anyone who wants that. I guess if you're trying to convince your parents that you're too sick to go to school, but I see no other use for this product. Next is the eyeshadows. These are some of the worst eyeshadows I've ever worked with in my life. I'm not sure if they're worse than the ColourPop Sailor Moon palette or the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice palette that I tried and really hated, but they might be, but they are in that category of top three worst eyeshadows I've ever tried in my life. They are so not pigmented. Like this shade that should be the transition on my skin tone, I have to build and build and build and build to even be able to see it. On people darker than me, like forget it, it's just not going to show up. And then when I try to blend it, it just disappears. These other mattes, you can at least see them when you first put them down, but they don't blend. Like they just don't blend. You have to stamp them where you want them, and I hope you're okay with harsh lines because if you try to blend them, they will get patchy, they will get weird, they will blend away. Like, I, I, I don't know how these are so bad, but they're really bad. Like, how literally everything you could have wrong with an eyeshadow is wrong with these, but they are. And then the shimmers, these aren't even shimmers. These are barely satins. Like, I am someone who likes a more toned down, everyday type of shimmer. But even these are way too subtle for me. You, you might as well not even be wearing a shimmer. Because, like, I'm wearing a shimmer on my lid, and this looks like it might as well be a completely matte look. And then on top of all of that, these eyeshadows, again, just, like, evaporate off your eyes. I went to work wearing these shadows the other day, and by the time I got home, you could barely see them. An hour after I got home, they were gone. Like, no pigment left. It's not like it creased. It's not like it bunched up somewhere and I could still see, like, where it was. It was just gone. I might as well have not put on any eyeshadow that day. And I'm like, I've never had an eyeshadow do that to me. Ever. To where it's just gone. Just gone. And I brought out some palettes to compare to this one. Because... I want to show you side by side this versus some other more affordable palettes. So first I want to compare it to the I Heart Revolution Rose Fizz because I know this is a formula that a lot of people don't love. I love this formula, I love this palette, but I know a lot of people don't and say that Revolution shadows are just not that good. So I want to compare these also because I think there are a lot of similar colors. So first I'm going to compare this shade from REM and I'm giving it a good swatch to this shade from the Revolution palette, again giving it a good swatch, you can see the difference in pigment. I know they're different colors, they're not exact, but you can see the difference of that pigment. I'm going to swatch three of them on my arm and then do a close-up of all three, because I also want to swatch this dark brown, again rubbing my finger in it, giving it a good shot, next to this darker brown, again it's kind of plummy more purple, but two dark browns. This is the REM, this is the Revolution. And then I wanna swatch a shimmer. So I'm gonna be swatching this shimmer. Again, giving it, giving it a fair shot. Next to this shimmer. Yeah, this is the REM, this is the Revolution. And you can see even Revolution that is known for having more everyday wearable shimmers has more of a shine than that REM one. So there are the swatches next to each other. This is REM, this is Revolution, this is Revolution, this is REM, this is Revolution, this is REM. As you can see, the Revolution ones just have more substance, more shine. They swatched out better, whereas was like these REM ones kind of got stuck where I first put my finger down and then didn't really blend into a tail much. I know swatches don't tell the whole story, but I think that that shows a good difference. But like I said, I do genuinely love this formula, so I want to compare this to a formula that I don't love as much. And the worst formula in my collection that is still, I think, good enough to be in my collection, 
mostly because of the color story, is in the Morphe 39L Hit the Lights. So I'm just watching it next to some of these shadows. I don't really like the Morphe formula, but even this works better than this. So, but again, I'm gonna take this REM shade and I'm gonna swatch it next to this one from the Morphe palette. They're closer in color, but as you can see, this Morphe one, definitely more pigmented than this REM one. Then I'm gonna take this more warm, darker shade and compare it to this more warm shade. Yeah. Again, I feel like you can just see the difference. And then for the shimmers, I'm gonna take this shimmer. I'm gonna compare it to this shade in the Morphe palette. Again, the shine on this is just so much better. And there they all are swatched out next to each other. So that's Morphe, that's REM, that's Morphe, that's REM, that's Morphe, that's REM. And I don't even like the Morphe formula, but that is just so much better. Like, especially in that shade, Look at that difference. So yeah, I am definitely not a fan of this palette, but the worst product. Okay, I guess this and the lip stain were kind of tied for second place, second to last, because the worst product, which is sad because it's the product I was most excited about, is the highlighter in the shade Mama Earth, because I love a green highlighter. I think a green highlighter as a pop is just so stunning, so pretty, so fun, but this one is just so bad. And I've had a lot of green highlighters in the past. It's one of my favorite just like fun pops in a makeup collection, so I know the difference between a good one and a bad one, and this is the worst one I've ever tried because this one leaves such a terrible green cast on your skin, and then it's not even that green when you turn. Like, a good green highlighter will have a transparent base and then a green flip to it so it doesn't give you a green cast but when the light catches it you're like oh fun green this is the exact opposite this has a very green base so it gives you a pretty strong green cast and then when you turn it's like a neutral shimmer shine to it so it's not a, it's not even really a green highlighter i actually did not do my highlighter simply so i could compare this on my cheeks to this on my cheeks this Lorac one in the shade limelight is my favorite green highlighter this is the best green highlighter i've tried and i want to show you side by side the difference and i just realized my highlighter brush is over there so one second <laughs> okay i'm back i have my highlighter brush i'm gonna take the shade limelight first and put it on this side tapping my brush in tap it off a little bit This is what a green highlighter should look like. It has a green flip, but when I look you straight, you can't see it. There's no green cast, there's no weirdness. I'm gonna try to clean off my brush real quick and rub it on a towel. And now, the REM one. Going in on this, a few taps, tap it off. Yeah, I can see a green cast can't see much of a highlight. Like, boom, highlighter. Barely any. So I have to build this up more to try to get a highlight. Even though, again, in real life, I already am seeing a green cast. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but I would add more anyway, just because I'm not getting much of a highlight. And I'm Shrek. The reflect isn't even green, and when I look straight, green cast. Let me zoom in a little bit to try to show you better. I really hope this comes off on camera because nice highlighter, crappy highlighter. Seriously, can you see that green cast on my face? I know in real life you can super well. Like it's just, it's so bad. There's nothing I can do to get this to look good. I I don't know who approved this. I don't know who put this on their face and went, yeah, that's a good idea. We are done with that formula. Let's sell that to the public for $22. $22 for this. So no, I would not recommend this, this, or the lip stain that has disappeared at all. I barely recommend these. But if, like I said, you're a huge Ariana fan and you just want like a piece of her makeup collection, these are okay as long as you know what you're getting yourself into. But like, just just avoid these and the lip stain and this because they're all bad. They're really, really bad. 
But with that, you can see for yourself, let's go ahead and move into the demo portion of this video. I'm genuinely not looking forward to putting this makeup on because I think my base looks really nice today and I just know these products are not gonna work well, but you need to see how much I struggle with these to get them on. So first, let's go ahead and dive into the eyeshadow palette. I got the shade Baby Doll. And I'm gonna start with the shade that I personally have had the most trouble with so you can see it. And it's this shade right here because it just does not show up. It doesn't show up and I can build and build and build. And finally on my super pale skin, it will show up, but then it just blends away really quickly. So I'm just gonna dip my brush into this, tap it off lightly and go on in. No pigment pigment like it doesn't really even look like it did anything I mean I know it's kind of a lighter shade but when you look at this palette this seems to be the main transition shade for my skin tone and for a lot of people and it is barely showing up on me who is white as a freaking ghost this just isn't gonna show up on the majority of the population who buys this palette because you're probably gonna be darker than me and I can barely get it to show up. Let's go for a third layer. Okay, there we go. I can finally see it. But then it just blends away. Try to blend out the edges. but it doesn't blend, it just goes away. <laughs> it just evaporates. But next I'm gonna go into this shade so I can actually try to have a real transition shade on my eye, even though this is darker than what I would usually use. At least this one, you can actually see it. Though compared to the pan, I feel like you can see that doesn't show up as pigmented on my eye as you would think based on the color in the pan, but it also just kind of blends away when I try to blend the edges. I feel like it doesn't want to blend. It just kind of looks patchy and stuck to where I originally put it, if it even does show up. I just, I'm just struggling. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of the cream shade in the palette on this brush and try to get that to help this blend out some because it's like the crease looks unblended and then up here it just looks like I didn't even do anything that's the best I'm gonna get it that's the best I'm gonna get it that's the best I've been getting it like that is probably the best I've ever gotten that eyeshadow to look and it doesn't even look that good okay I think this side looks a little bit better so this is now the best I've ever gotten it to look and it still doesn't really look that good. Now I'm gonna go in with this darker shade and this darker shade at least does show up pretty well, even if it's still kind of hard to blend. You can at least see it on the eye. Though again, in comparison to this shade, not super pigmented, which I know not everyone likes super pigmented. I'm one of those people that I don't like super, super pigmented right off the bat, especially if it's gonna be this lightly pigmented. I need it to blend well and they don't even blend well. And again, as I blend this up here, it just kind of disappears. Like, I don't want this to be this harsh line, but it just doesn't want to go any further. It doesn't want to blend just doesn't perform well. It just doesn't perform well, which I'm sure you have already heard all about by this time in the video. But I hope you can see that with your own eyes right now, that this just, I'm trying. I'm trying to make it look good, but it just doesn't want to. And again, it's just kind of blending away out here, that darker shade. I had that pulled up more into a little bit of a lifted shape and it's gone. So it's like basically you just have to kind of stamp with this darker shade and not move it. So you're gonna get harsh lines and there's not much you can do about it. I'm gonna clean up the edges a little bit with my CoverGirl CG Smoothers just to try to shape this a little bit. 
And now for the lower lash line, I'm gonna use the same brush I always use, and I'm gonna go into this shade first, like I usually would, for my lower lash line. And I am like digging, and I am like digging it into the palette. So like I should have plenty of pigment, just tapping it off once for a little excess, but let's see. At least you can see it under my eye. I'm gonna dip into it like I would for any other palette to show you the difference. So if I was not trying to like really make this show up, I would just like that. Like if I was using any other palette, that's how I would use it. And look what happens. That is the difference. Any other palette digging in for this one. Now I'm gonna take some of that dark brown to connect the outer corners, but I'm just gonna take a blank fluffy brush and try to blend this together a little bit. And I know that this outer edge just looks like garbage, but I really don't know what to do at this point to try to save it. Moving on. Now I'm gonna take this shimmer, well, shimmer on my finger and pat this over the eye. This is at least pigmented. But my question is, where's the shimmer? Like genuinely, where's the shine? Where's any, any reflectiveness that looks like more of a, like a textured matte is what that is more than a shimmer or even a satin really. Maybe it's a satin. Like I am the person this should be appealing to. I am the person who likes a more subtle everyday shimmer. But even I'm just like, that's a little too subtle. I'm gonna use a different shadow for the inner corner. I'm going to use, I'm gonna use this City Chic eyeshadow in the shade Skinny Latte. This is like a dollar from the dollar store. Like this is cheap, cheap makeup. Um, and I'm just gonna show you on my eyes the difference between literally a dollar eyeshadow and this. $24 six pan eyeshadow palette. Like, can you see that? I know it's a brighter color, but it just has more shine to it. Like this dollar eyeshadow, it's still more of a subtle everyday type of shadow, but it actually looks like a shimmer eyeshadow. All right, usually I would do my setting spray and browse a mascara next, but I want to go ahead and demo the lip stain for you. And then I'll just finish everything else off camera and we can just get back to the video as planned. So this is the lip stain in the shade Booked and Busy. And I wanna show you how difficult this is to put on. And I'm genuinely going to try to make it look good. Like I want to look good in my own YouTube video, you know? So I'm gonna try to make this look good and we'll see how it ends up. Can you see that line there? Like between where I used it as a lip liner and where I'm trying to like paint it on? Why is it doing that? What is this? That is a patchy mess. That is an absolute patchy mess. And I had lip balm on, my lips weren't dry or chapped, they weren't flaky, that doesn't look good. And I know it's not gonna look good in the future because I took a photo of the first time I tried to wear this 20 minutes, 20 minutes after I put it on. And you already saw that photo, like it didn't look good. Yeah, I'm gonna finish the rest of my makeup. So let's get my best friend here to share her experience with these products as well. And as promised, I am not the only person who tried out these products for you. I had my best friend also test them out. Um, Yay. I'm sorry to come and give her opinion as well so you can get a second opinion on these products because I feel like this review has been a lot different from a lot of the reviews I've seen. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure to give a second opinion, give them another chance because like I said, I really wanted to like these products or find these products a new home, but what, what has your experience been with these products? Well, I don't know that this was a product that I ever probably would have bought just because Ariana Grande, I'm not as huge of a fan as she is. Sorry. But, um, so I was still excited to try the products, and then when I tried them, they were genuinely bad. Yeah. Like, I turned to her and I told her, I'm not sure why this lip marker is working like this, but genuinely, I'm a big lip stain person. I use them all the time, 
and this is the worst lip stain I have ever tried in my entire life. And then this morning I tried the eyeshadow and I came up with an okay look, I think. Your look is better than mine. <laughs> but it's still not, like this is my everyday look. This is the kind of thing that I do every single day for school and it took me way longer than it should have because things kept blending into non-existence or patching and I've never had that issue with eyeshadow. So it's just not been great. Elaborating on the eyeshadows, how did you get them to finally work? You told me like basically you just didn't blend. Right, yeah. So what I did was um, I took a fluffy brush with one of the darker shades because I realized the lighter shade, you couldn't see it, it didn't do anything. So I took the darker shade and I just put it there. I didn't blend, didn't do anything else because the second that I tried to blend it was gone. So I just... And see, I like a blended look and I feel like you usually like a blended look too. Yeah. Um, so... That explains the difference between our our looks and our success, because I think yours actually looks passable. Like, I don't think it looks bad at all. It's just not as blended as you usually would. But yeah. I just kept fighting it, because I'm like, I want my eyeshadow blended. Well, and I think the other thing is it looks like an all-matte eye, because there's literally no shimmer to these at all. Like, I don't know if you can tell, but there is no shimmer. It looks like a pure matte eye. Yeah. Um, not, not great. It's just been an experience. Yeah. And it's just one of those things that, like, I'm not a huge green highlighter person. I know you are. Yes. Yes, I am. I love green highlighter. Um, but I don't love being Trek. It's not really the goal, is it? No. So, like, I don't know how well the green cast is coming across on camera, but she doesn't know which side is the good green highlighter and which is the bad. And I'm going to have her guess, so we'll see if you can really tell in real life which is which. That one's definitely the bad one. Yeah. There's no question. Yeah. And I can very much see it on your face, too, that, that green cast. And you have olive skin. Yeah. You have an olive skin tone, and you can still see that green. It's so bad. It's so bad. I just... It's a look. It's a look. It's not a good look. No. And, and like I said, the Miss Venus one is fine. But in comparison to that Kaleidos one that I showed earlier in the video... It's just like, why would you ever buy this? It was fine, but when I tried it, I had to layer it, like, I would say three or four layers to get, like, a good, like, golden glow. And by then, you could see a sheet of yellow on my cheekbone. Yeah, so overall, these products are just bad. And it makes me really sad because when I first saw the line, I was like, wow, she really took the time to put a lot of effort and planning into the aesthetic and everything A to Z, but I guess they just forgot about the formulas. Brandy. Yeah. Don't worry about that part. Um, I don't think you've tried this one yet. No. Um, but you have tried this one. What do you think of the liquid shadow? Because I said that this was one of the two products that as long as you know what you're getting into, if you really want to try REM Beauty, you'd probably be happy with this. Yeah. So I think it was pretty good. It's in my inner corners right now. Um, I enjoyed it, but I will say that it's not up to the quality of some other liquid shadows that I have. I'm a big liquid shadow person. Um, it was good. But I'm not sure it was the best I've tried. It's just not great. And for the price point, you could get yourself one of the Stila liquid eyeshadows, and I find that the quality of those is a little bit better. But if you just want to try out an Ariana product, I think this is a good one to go for. Or the perfumes. The perfumes are great. Oh, I have yes. a couple of the perfumes. They're wonderful. So I would suggest that over the makeup, to be honest. Um, like I said, I'm trying to get my money back because I just, I find this quality genuinely unacceptable. And like I said, I can't just pass, pass this along to other people because it is that bad. And I genuinely don't know how this has been getting good reviews because before I got it, I was so hyped. I was like watching people's reviews of it. And some people I found said, you know, they weren't too happy with a couple of the products, but I genuinely saw a lot of people giving this especially a decent review. Okay. But all tea, all shade. It didn't look good on them either. Yeah. Because yeah. I watched them too. I was confused. <laughs> I was like, you know, maybe it's just the camera. Maybe the camera is lying to me and it works for them. Uh... I tried the lip marker four times because yeah. I was just like, I must just be wrong. And didn't you specifically, like you looked up how Ariana said to yeah, use it, right? Yeah. So how did she say to use it? Yeah, so basically what she said was that what she likes to do is put down a chapstick and then um, line it on the inner part of her lip and then dab it out, which I think is nice if that worked. When I tried this technique, I walked outside and my roommate actually asked if I was ill, 
and if there was something wrong with my lips. <laughs> to be fair, I have bronchitis and I think she thought it was a part of that. But still, no! If, if any lip product makes people ask if you're feeling okay, I tried so hard. It's so, and then, and then I, wa I was so hyped about the highlighter and now I'm fucking track. You're at least Fiona. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, don't buy REM Beauty. Please Just don't. don't. You deserve better in your life. You do. Like, literally, I made this order and I made a ColourPop order and everything in the ColourPop order so much better than this and way cheaper so look when you have to look at this and be like would i rather use this or, or a morphe palette and morphe is the arguable winner that's what i gotta say about that yeah i i swatched my morphe palette for them then they know yeah they know thank you so much for watching and i will see you all next time and of course sarah will be back at some point in the future probably i was just trying to think of something funny and cute at the end okay then should we do that or what are we doing I can't think of anything. <gasps> Funny cute ending here. Bestie ending. Bye.